pritisci na medije, napadi, etiketiranja, besparica u medijskim kućama, namješteni konkursi, povlašćeni mediji, lažne vesti. Sve su to problemi sa kojima se sedma sila u Srbiji susreće poslednjih godina. Airex je organizacija koja se bavi i osnaživanjem medija, a o tome šta i koliko mogu da pomognu medijima u Srbiji, razgovaram sa direktorom USAID-ovog programa za održivost medija, koji sprovodi Airex kod nas, Evanom Trejsu. Gospodine Trejs, dobrodošli u studiju Južnih Vesti i dobrodošli u Niš. Dobar dan. Hvala. Nekoliko godina ste već u Srbiji, vodite ovaj program USAID-ov, o kome smo u uvodu i rekli nešto. Kakvi su vaši utisci, kakva je medijska slika, medijska situacija generalno u Srbiji? Da li se negde poklapa s ovim činjenicama, da tako kažemo, koje sam ja naveo u svom uvodu? Yeah, I've been here about two or three years now and working on this project. Um, I've gotten to know the media scene uh, a fair deal. I've uh, worked with a lot of different outlets um, like Jus Nevesti and many others. And certainly it's a complicated picture. Uh, on one side you have um, a very politicized environment, so you have politics encroaching in the media space. Um, you also have the emergence of disinformation, fake news, misinformation propaganda, as elsewhere in the world, that's also encroaching in the space. You have vertical integration, uh, in many cases, of some of the larger media companies that are now sort of taking up a bigger piece of the market in terms of advertising revenues and yeah. just essentially attention of the public. And at the same time, you also have a proliferation of media sources, both Serbian and international, that are crowding the space. Mm -hmm. So it makes it quite chaotic. It makes it difficult for independent, smaller media especially, to emerge and be successful in the market. So what, what we see is that there are many, many different problems and mm -hmm. issues uh, here in the Serbian uh, media e ecosystem, so to speak. Um, and so there are many different ways to try to approach how to help uh, make da. it better. Pričat ćemo kako, kako, koji su pristupi i kako to popraviti, ali pitao bih vas, pošto ste i sami rekli da je malo haotično sve to, mm -hmm. da sam dobro razumeo, ovaj, kad biste ocenjivali na skali od 1 do 10, koju biste ocenu u srpskim medijima i stanju generalno u srpskim medijima dali za slobodu medija, a koju za profesionalizam u medijima? That's a tough one to answer. Uh, first of all, because you have different groups of media, right? So you have, you know, the sort of big TV stations, etc. And within that, you find that there's quality issues and there's content issues. I, I wouldn't want to rate it so simply on a scale like that, but I will say that there are um, there are really high and low moments within the whole spectrum. That mm -hmm. is, there are some really important work being done by outlets like Yuznavesti and many other smaller ones and regional ones that are providing really quality content um, and also building an audience that's a community, an audience that actually supports the idea of having a media that deals with the issues that they face every day. At the same time, at the other end of the spectrum, you have tabloid type uh, content, you have sensationalism, you have propaganda and fake news that are proliferating. So you see some of the kind of the worst sides of, of the media space that are quite loud. But then at the same time, um, there are people who are really pushing for improvements and giving the kind of content that people da, need. Pomenuli ste publiku. Da li publika razume zapravo da postoje mediji koji su iz tog tabloidnog spektra i ovi drugi koji su profesionalni i koji su na tom nekom najvišem nivou, kako ste rekli. Da li publika, konzumenti to to shvataju u Srbiji? That's a good question and frankly IREX also supports another program here aside from the one that, uh, that I direct uh, which is uh, called Learn to Discern which is really about media literacy. It is a problem that the public can't necessarily easily identify which are good uh, sub, uh, good uh, outlets or outlets that are uh, supporting the right kinds of uh, journalistic approaches and ones that are not. And so I would say, yes, that is a, an increasing problem, not just in Serbia, but, but around the world, especially because the, the actors that are trying to cloud that space with disinformation are very sophisticated and they know that they can do different things so that you can confuse the reader as to if they're, whether they're reading hard news, opinion, propaganda. So I would say no. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that the, the that the Serbian public is not sufficiently media literate, and that is not just Serbia. It goes for for my country of the U.S. as well, and many countries in Europe. Šta možda se uradi po tom pitanju? Možda neka edukacija o medijskoj pismenosti, kursevi za školarce, za starije. Znam da IREX ima takav program. Yeah, the the IREX program is called Learn to Discern, and it, it actually is premised on working with 
primarily young people, but within the digital media that they're using now. So in other words, not in a sort of academic way, but actually dealing with the problem by showing you, you know, what are you looking at in your phone? How are you using applications? What sites are you visiting? How do you check that information? So it's trying to reach people in a very pragmatic way. But at the same time, I also agree that in schools, um, it should really be part of the curriculum because in the, certainly now in the space that, that kids are growing up in, they're being bombarded by information from all sides and they need to be given the tools and the approaches and the strategies to be able to, to differentiate quality information, objective information, from propaganda, disinformation, and opinion. Da. A kakva je vaš utisak? Kako se država odnosi prema problemima u medijima? Pritisci, pretnje, lažne vesti, da li, država, da li ste primetili da vlada reaguje na to? Mm -hmm. Na neki način da, da to spreči, da ukaže da je to loše? Mm -hmm. Ili se dešava nešto suprotno? Kako je vaš utisak? Um, I think it's hard to say. I mean, it really depends on what, what media, what corner of the media market you're looking at. And obviously you have some very bad cases of misinformation and fake news that's, that are happening. But at the same time, you have some, uh, some organizations and some outlets that are actively trying to fight against it. So there, there is, I'd say the antibodies are there in the society and there is, uh, I think, a movement and there's an awareness among people that there is this problem so that there is the chance for a change and there's a chance for, for movement in the right direction because w even when we have polled uh, the population of Serbia, uh, we've seen that m over 50% will identify that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Even if they can't necessarily make a good distinction between all of the types of uh, information that they're seeing, mm -hmm. they already feel that there's a problem there, that there's over-politicization and mm -hmm. then there's too much propaganda in the news environment. Недавно е надолили награда за истраживачко новинарство Амерички амбасадор Антони Готфри позвао медиска одруженија која су иступила из радне групе koji su sa vladom Srbije, ove, nezadovoljno zbog uh, nereagovanja vlade, istupile su odatle, Anthony Godfrey je pozvao da se vrate. Uh, moje pitanje za vas je da li je to rešenje, da li je dialog rešenje za negde početak rešavanja svih problema u medijskom spektru? It's a difficult decision to make. Obviously, dialogue is important. So I understand why someone, why the ambassador and others would say, look, let's try to keep dialogue at all costs. Because when you don't have dialogue, there's no chance for a resolution. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I can understand uh, how others would say, look, if we don't feel that this dialogue has a potential resolution or that it's actually being done in a way that will bring about solutions and change, then they don't want to participate. So I can, I can see both sides of the perspective um, mm -hmm. of that issue. Um, I would say that it's the kind of problem that faces a lot of different journalists at certain different times as well not just media organizations, but also journalists, which is, you know, when do I use certain sources? When can I trust that the information I'm getting is being used in a proper way? And how can I cover that in a way that is objective as possible? So it's, it's, a, it's a classic problem. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly wouldn't want to say that one way or the other is the proper way, but I can see how it can be a, a dilemma. Pričali smo o medijskoj pismenosti, um, taj projekat je već Airex negde implementirao, ali tako u drugim zemljama Evrope. Yeah. Uh, da li možete da kažete nešto o rezultatima i kakve se rezultati očekuju kod nas? Yeah, um, we've implemented this project, um, and this is, I should say, the, the, the one here in Serbia is funded by the U.S. Embassy, not mm -hmm. USAID, but um, related, of course. Um, we've implemented this in Ukraine, um, in parts of Africa, the Middle East, and in the U.S., and the results have been actually quite good. We, the, the, the program itself is um, definitely uses data more than many other uh, media literacy programs insofar as we test people who have done the training and gone through the practices, not just on whether they think they have changed their mind, but we actually test them on how they make their decisions later. So, you know, three months later, six months later. And the results show that once people are given these skills in a way that's pragmatic in the way that they use media every day, they tend to go and check sources more. They again, they again to distrust the, the first, uh, you know, Twitter, Twitter an announcement they see or a Facebook post without going to the source, seeing where it's coming from and then validating it. So I don't have percentages on, on, in my head right now, but uh, overall, people have been very happy with the results. And I can say in Ukraine, for example, the program has expanded into the education uh, sphere, so it's actually working through schools. And here in Serbia, it's now we're in the second or third year of the implementation, and it's also starting to expand to teachers and to children, 
or to youth so that they can use those skills directly in their lives. Kako je vaše razmišljanje? Malo smo i pre emisije pričali o koroni, o vakcinama. Znamo da je negde ova epidemija donela i tu infodemiju, kako je zovemo. Bezbroj tih nekih dezinformacija i ljudi veruju, dakle ljudi ugrožavaju svoje zdravlje verujući lažnim vestima. Da li je sada medijska pismenost u ovom kontekstu značajnija nego pre? Yeah, I'd say it even shows how dangerous it can be. Another way to show how dangerous it can be when people don't trust the information that they have or that people trust information that's not good. Certainly, I would say this has been another lesson for humanity that if people are not given the proper information, it has very dire consequences, not just for their community, not just for their country, but for the world, because this is a global pandemic. So I would say, absolutely, this has now been an object lesson and what happens when um, other voices are starting to spread misinformation and disinformation. And when you have a polarized, politicized society, that actually feeds off of that. So when one side or another of a political question um, decides to connect itself to one set of beliefs, uh, and that's based on a political calculation, not on a scientific or rational calculation, you have problems like this where certain people will not get vaccinated or certain people won't believe that the pandemic is as bad as it is or they'll believe other crazy theories about where it started. Da, ima, imam pitanje o, o komparaciju poređivanju medija u Americi i u Srbiji, mm -hmm. ali nekako mi se sad nadovezuje o, o, u Americi je, dakle, i pre, dok je u vreme mandata predsjednika Trumpa mm -hmm. bilo je dosta čudnih izjava i o koroni i o vakcinama s njegove strane, ali nekako su mediji postupili drugačiji i odgovornije, čini mi se, i prenosili su ono što kažu epidemiolozi i negde je glavna zvezda bio doktor Fauci, ako se dobro sećam, a ne predsjednik Trump. Čini mi se da je to u kontekstu Srbije presedan. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the dynamic that we're worried about, right? I mean, the, the fact that during that time in the U.S. there was different messages coming from authority, mm -hmm. uh, messages that uh, were really important messages, but they were being diverted in different directions. Um, and, you know, w at one point, for example, if Dr. Fauci says something and then uh, either the president or some other leader says something that counters it, what are people to believe? So then you have a, a situation where the news itself, even reporting the news, ends up uh, routing potentially disinformation because you're talking, well, you know, he said this and she said this, and it makes it very difficult for the public. And, and, and so, yeah, in Serbia as in el elsewhere, when you have issues that are of prime importance for the public and you're having different voices that are commanding authority, injecting different types of information into that space, what you have is chaos and what you have is people who have difficulty making proper decisions in their lives. Yes. Uh Kažem, ovde USA je za program za održivost medija. U čemu se to ogleda? Kako IREX pomaže održivost medija? Yeah, I mean, this is what I said in the first question you asked about what, you know, what the prospects for media in Serbia are, especially independent media. There are many issues within the space, but the space that we have dealt with in this project is the ability for media to sustain itself, because if media is to be independent and objective, it needs to feel that it doesn't depend on particularly any one, uh, one person or one institution or even a few within society for its livelihood. So media to be independent have to be independent, away from dependence on funding from governments, funding from donors even, funding from one or two different sources because then you are beholden potentially to the interests of that, uh, of that entity. Mm -hmm. So that's why the SMS project, as we call it, the Strengthening Media Systems Project, is trying to enable media to think about ways that they can diversify their mm -hmm. income, increase that income, hopefully, so make more money. And, and why? Because, you know, first of all, journalists you know, depend on being paid, which is an important aspect, but also that if you have a media outlet that is comfortable in its finances, it is not so worried about reporting on difficult issues, giving people the information that they want. Um, if you are dependent on one or another institution for financial livelihood and you have to report on that, on that entity, what are you going to say, right? Yes. You are potentially compromised. So that's why we have worked with a bunch of different media outlets throughout the country to enable them to look at the way that they do their business. And they're a business, even if they're an NGO, it's still a business. Are they maximizing their potential? 
Are they maximizing their market share? Are they bringing their audience together? Are they getting a community around them that support them that will help them? And, and you know, it, whether it's donations, subscriptions, or memberships, this is important money, and this is important for the actual outlet and the audience and the community itself. Da. A da li, uh, da li, kako je vaš negde zaključak, da li su kompanije, na primjer, privatne spremne da pomognu u rad medija, da finansiraju neke medije? Da li je publika, opet se vraćamo na nju, spremna da daje donacije i da, da opet na neki način pomogne rad medije? Yeah, I mean, I, we are seeing trends in the right direction. Let's put it that way. Small, and mm-hmm. it's not sufficient yet. And that's not, not just in Serbia, but everywhere. But now I think it's clear that media, successful media of any size, whether it's a small town media or a national media, they need to have different support structures. And that means getting some revenue and support from their audiences. And yes, in Serbia, we have enabled many media outlets to start bringing in substantial amounts of money from their audiences. Mm -hmm. And also it means partnerships with other organizations or businesses, as long as it's separated from the editorial policy, of course. And it also means looking for ways to expand your business model. Maybe there are other ways to bring in revenue that are not dependent on advertising, not even dependent on the content that's being produced. Maybe there's something within the community, community organiza- uh, organizations, events, um, different ways of using the skills of an outlet to bring in other support. Diversification of revenue streams and increasing the support structures of different elements of society, that is the way forward for media in Serbia and, and globally. Da, I, još jedno pitanje mm-hmm. za kraj. Uh, kad, kad pričamo ovako sa, sa kolegama iz branše, ovaj, oni kažu u medijima nema para, to je neka mantra. Yeah. Uh, da li žele uopće da prihvate te neke nove ideje, nove biznis modele, da razmišljaju o načinima za, za, za drugi put do zarade i tako dalje? Kako, kakav je pristup yeah. uh, vlasnika medija, novinara, ko, koga god ko želi da, da pokreće neki svoj medij ili već ima? Well, it really is each individual outlet has its own opportunities and its own challenges. So it's hard. There is no one size fits all. However, you know, even in the big global media that you see out there in the last five to 10 years, their business models have changed quite drastically. I mean, even something like the New York Times or the Guardian, they're bringing in at least half of their revenue directly from subscriptions, which, you know, five years ago, everybody laughed. That was not possible. Or they start a podcast. And suddenly the podcast becomes super popular and the podcast is bringing in more money than the daily news, for example. And then you have other institutions that have a side business, let's say. You have a a restaurant or even a cafe or a store. Mm -hmm. And that becomes another aspect. So it really depends on where the, the, the outlet is situated in the community, not just geographically, and how it interacts with the community. So an outlet that is considered a real institution within the community can really build on its trust factor, can build on the dedication of its audience to bring in different ways, whether it's selling t-shirts or coffee mugs or having a, a yearly event and having a, some uh, premium content, um, organizing uh, different types of, uh, of production, whether it's podcasts or videos, uh, you know, 15-minute segments that people no. might watch. Trying, testing out those different ideas and finding what works for that outlet That's what our project is trying to, to help uh, do over the last few years and hope that we can do into the future. Da, ja se nadam da ćemo moći. Hvala vam na gostovanju. Hvala vam. Uh, gledali ste emisiju 15 minuta. Moje ime je Aleksandar Stankov.